60 million years ago, and the Earth has mostly recovered from the mass extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs. However, most animal life is still relatively small across the globe. In North Colombia, however, some animals have bucked this trend. The environment here is hot and humid almost year-round, with massive rainfall. The first known neotropical rainforest. All this heat means that reptiles can get big, such as the giant tortoise, Carbinamos. This 2 meter long, 300 kilogram turtle can often be found casually strolling or bathing in the muddy swamps. But don't let their docile nature fool you. These shell giants eat crocodiles, and there are plenty of small and large species living on both land and in the water. One of these large turtles finishes warming up in the morning sun and heads down to the river. Along his path, he walks into a muddy recess filled with strange logs. The turtle lifts himself up onto the first of these logs and pushes himself over the next. But then the logs shift. All of them, all at once, twist and sliver beneath the now confused turtle. His back feet fall to the mud below him, and he feels some of the logs maneuver around his shell, and some of them coil around him and squeeze. The turtle now knows that these are not logs, and as he feels the pressure on his body grow stronger and stronger, he looks up and sees a fearsome face. Rearing up on the front part of its long, scaly body and flicking its forked tongue is a Titanoboa, the largest snake the world has ever seen. This female is 13 meters long and weighs a ton, the Colossus of Columbia. She too had been baking in the sun, waiting for her body to absorb enough energy in order to move around, and not expecting to be stepped on. She eyes the secured turtle, now helpless as she coils twice around his shell. His defense is formidable, but he is not in the Titanoboa's weight class, and she would need only apply a portion of her strength to crush him. But after examining what she has caught, the massive snake turns away and slivers towards the river, releasing her prey to wade in the mud. She can feed on turtles, but they are not her primary food source, and they contain little meat for the effort of digesting the entire shell. Her kind mostly feed on fish. In fact, she will spend most of her life in the waterways of her humid home. As she descends into the river, she begins to look for prey, though it doesn't matter if she finds any today. She can go for another couple of weeks without food, in fact. A benefit from being cold-blooded, even if you are reliant on the environment being hot. After swimming for a few hours, she comes across a potential meal, Resting on the riverbank is a young Archaeotasuchus. At two meters long, it would make a good catch. The Titanoboa submerges and approaches, completely unseen thanks to the muddy water. When she is close to the riverbank, she launches her head out of the water and grabs the croc by the base of the tail. The smaller reptile tries to bite back, but cannot reach. He is then effortlessly pulled into the water, and the Titanoboa begins to wrap her prey. Once the first coil is around the victim, the Titanoboa lets go with her jaws. Unlike modern boas, her teeth are not especially strong, and she relies more on the strength of her body. One coil after another goes around the crocodilian, and soon only the tip of his tail and the front of his snout are visible. Above the water, the only hint of the struggle is when the Titanoboa comes up for air. The crocodile being strangled to death beneath the water doesn't stand a chance, and when he finally falls unconscious, the snake pulls him into shallower waters, dislocates her jaws, and begins to swallow him whole. The two-meter meal goes down easily, and now she won't have to feed for months. The world's largest snake slivers back into the river, looking for a good place to rest and digest. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the largest snake to ever live, Titanoboa. Titanoboa was discovered in 2009 in a coal mine located in Colombia. 
30 individuals were found on the first expedition, with hundreds of ribs and vertebrae found. Later expeditions would find more specimens, including skulls. Titanoboa grew to an average of 13 to 14 meters, weighed between 700 kilos and 1.1 tons, with a body width up to 1 meter. These figures are calculated not just from fossils, but using modern boas like reticulated pythons and anacondas as references. Reticulated pythons average around 7 meters, with some very large individuals reaching up to 9 meters. So it stands to reason that though 14 meters might be the average, some Titanoboa could get considerably larger. Though it was the largest predator in its region, Titanoboa may have fed more on fish than on other large reptiles that it lived alongside. The reasoning is in its teeth and jaws. Modern boas have their teeth firmly fused to their jaws so that they don't break when grappling with large prey. Titanoboa's teeth are not fused anywhere near as strongly, however they do have a lot more teeth, which is similar to snakes that feed mostly on fish, like sea snakes. So while this doesn't mean that they didn't eat other reptiles from time to time, it does mean that fish made up a large part of their diet, especially when they were growing. But how did it get so large? The key was its environment. It lived between 60 and 58 million years ago, and during this time, Colombia was covered in a very hot rainforest, which averaged around 30 to 34 degrees. Being cold-blooded, this higher temperature would have allowed Titanoboan to not only be more active, but also grow larger over time. Since the extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs only happened about 5 to 6 million years before, the niche of large predator would have been completely open, which Titanoboa grew to fill in as well. In fact, Titanoboa was the largest animal in its region by far, with other reptiles like turtles and crocodilomorphs also getting quite large and numerous. However, this also means that the criteria that let Titanoboa get so large were very specific, and when temperatures dropped, these massive serpents either died out or had to adapt to the change in environment. Some of the species that lived alongside include Carbotemis, a two meter long turtle with a meter wide shell, Acaratosuchus, a large fish eating croc, and Serajonasuchus, a small semi terrestrial croc. The plants in this area were not very diverse, however. This is likely because of the previous mass extinction event wiping out most life meant that a lot of plant species hadn't recovered or survived, and those that had flourished with less competition. Not much is known about how fast Titanoboa may have been. Given its diet, however, it was likely sluggish on land, while being more at home in the water. Still, moving around all that bulk, especially with it being so long, wouldn't have been easy, even when supported by water. Other than that, there isn't a lot to say about Titanoboa. It is essentially a massive snake. It feels like something straight out of a B-movie, or from an ancient myth. Despite its rather recent discovery, it's also quite well known amongst the general public. Having the title of the largest snake ever will do that after all. But what do you think of Titanoboa? Do you think because it mostly fed on fish that other large reptiles didn't fear it? Or do you believe it was feared as an apex predator by all species? Let me know what lesser known extinct creature you'd like me to do a breakdown on next. And until then, thank you for watching. Okay, for some reason, people keep asking who would win in a fight between Titanoboa and T-Rex, and I mean, like, seriously, it, it's T-Rex, like, come on guys, like, it's not, it's not even close, like, 99% of the time T-Rex is winning, it's, it's not even a contest, come on, seriously. <laughs>